Hi everyone, so sixth video in this little series on sort of lesser spoken of reasons why not, uh, no contact and the no contact lifestyle is so important. Um, this is one that actually kind of also links to breaking the cycle of abuse. Um, and when you're, so when you're in full no contact, usually sort of midway through, so you've, you've made your decision, you don't want this narcissist back. And so it's no longer a battle to be doing no contact. You're no longer trying to, you know, hide your phone and um, you're no longer checking their socials. You know, you, the, the feeling, I suppose the trauma bond, but the feeling of despair that this person has gone or you've got rid of them, um, has gone. You're now like, right, I'm in no contact. That was an abusive relationship. Um, I was bullied, I was manipulated, I was cheated on, or I was betrayed, I was gaslighted, and I was humiliated. You know, the pennies have dropped, you know now that no contact is the right thing to do, and you're doing it. What tends to happen around about this stage, that'll make a lot of people actually suddenly wobble and break no contact, is you realise how much of your life you gave up for the narcissist or you neglected and possibly even therefore allowed to be destroyed by the narcissist when you're in the relationship because narcissistic abuse is a is a is, is so complex it must be the only form of abuse where we actively choose and even beg to go back to it right i can't think of any other type of abusive situation or context where the victim wants the abuser back or wants to be in that relationship, in that house, in that friendship. It, you know, it, it, I can't at all. And no contact allows you to realign your life. And it can be incredibly um, upsetting. And trauma, actually, you almost re-traumatise yourself when you start to see what you fucked up and you've neglected for that prick okay and more often than not particularly if you've been with a narcissist over a year or two your career your parenting your diet your lifestyle okay your health your friendships um even the the nice things that you used to enjoy doing your hobbies have all gone to fuck right but the narcissist wanted this so you can take some of the blame, okay, and that's actually really, really mature and healthy and a very important part of no contact is, is taking some ownership. Um, but the narcissist wanted that. That's their job, right? That's in, in all of those things falling apart in your life, okay? And, and maybe you willingly discarding friends and willingly getting the, leaving your kids with your ex, you know, with their, their parent longer so that you could see your narcissist more. And um, you gave up hobbies because you wanted to see your narcissist more. Um, and your career went to fuck because you were on your phone all the time or crying all the time or not going to work because you were sick or you were having sex with your narcissist, all these different things. The narcissist gets supply from the chaos and the um, slow, insidious destruction of your life and they get extra supply watching you do it to yourself so when you're in the no contact lifestyle all this stuff starts hitting you and you start realizing how badly you're fucked up and a lot of people will break no contact at this point because they think they've got nothing to lose now they they maybe want to go back to the relationship to try and salvage something so that at least they can justify you know messing their friendships up and their career up and things or they do it they break no contact because they want to fucking tell the narcissist what they've done you know you want to say how how could you do all that stuff knowing you were destroying my relationship with my kids my relationship with my family my relationship with my friends my job my career my mental health my body my, my physicality how could you do that so people will break no contact at this point there's no point in doing all that and saying all that to your narcissist, by the way, because you're just giving them supply, okay? When you're sent sit, reminding a narcissist of how much they fucked you and how much they hurt you, you're giving them supply, right? So, mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, they actually enjoy hearing that the, you, you reel off all the awful things that have happened to you because of them. Um, so, in being in this phase of the no, no, no contact, in, in the no contact lifestyle, you get a chance to look at what you fucked up and you get a chance to fix it. So a lot of people 
we become incredibly single-minded, um, maybe obsessed um, on the narcissist and we justify it. We, we, we think we love them. We think they need our help. We think the more time we spend with them, the more likely they're going to calm down, the abuse is going to stop and the cheating is going to stop. So we will absolutely neglect our parenting roles and duties. And that's a really difficult thing to focus on and get back. But the only way you're going to be able to focus on that and show your kids that you're strong and you're dignified and you're powerful and you are sorry, right, is by doing no contact and by by showing them you have zero, zilch, nada, interest in this abuser that fucked all your lives up, okay? You, put, you know, it's a way to get your friends back, your family back on side. Maybe even, you know, if you've got a particularly good boss or career, you can sit with them and tell them everything you've learned since you've been doing no contact about yourself and about your behaviours when you were with the abuser and how you fucked your job up. The no contact lifestyle has so many benefits and it has, it's just, we don't talk about these different, unusual, lesser spoken of reasons why no contact is so important. But if it gives you a chance to see where you've fucked up and what you've neglected and fix it, why else wouldn't you do no contact and do a full no contact lifestyle? I can help you with that. I'm the no contact coach. There's, um, my email is on my website, www.thenarcissisthunter.co.uk.